In this mini lecture, I am going to discuss the role of the teacher librarian in terms of digital literacies. This includes using Web 2.0 and social media. In the past 20 years, we have seen massive change in the way we access, interact with and create information. It used to be that information was scarce, that we needed to go to the library to access information because it was only available in a limited number of forms and those forms like encyclopedias and non-fiction texts, were very expensive. Most families didn't have access to information at home, and because it was costly to reproduce the information, most schools had all of it collected in one place, the library, and everyone shared it. The role of the teacher librarian was to make sure that the information was available by purchasing the right books for the community, and to make sure that the sharing of this information was managed equitably. Nowadays, we are overwhelmed with information. We're dealing with information abundance. The role of the library and the teacher librarian has changed from managing a limited resource to developing the digital literacies needed to navigate and negotiate overwhelming amounts of information. The reason for this transformation from information scarcity to abundance is the development of the internet from Web 1.0 to Web 2.0 and now Web 3.0. Web 1.0 made huge amounts of information more accessible. Instead of being analog, information became digital. This meant that it was searchable and able to be replicated far more easily. Instead of printing a new book, we just needed to copy and paste. Web 2.0 gave us the capacity to create and contribute to that information. Platforms including social media meant that we no longer needed complex web development skills to create content and share it online. We had blogs and wikis, we had chat rooms and forums, we could make video and upload it and share it with the world. This led to an explosion in the amount of information being created and shared, and this explosion just keeps getting bigger. We've moved from fairly boring text-based websites to now having the ability to create infographics using tools like PictoChart and beautiful graphic design using drag and drop with Canva. We can make high quality edited photographs and professional looking websites. The average person can create very impressive looking content relatively quickly. What's more, they can publish this to the world without editing process. And this means we have a lot of inaccurate or purposefully misleading information also available, which looks very professional. Web 3.0 adds an additional layer to this complex information environment. Now the web is personalized. Algorithms and cookies mean that massive amounts of data is collected every time we use the internet. And this information is used to tailor what we see and what we experience. So what one person finds when they search through Google may be quite different to another person's search results, depending upon the proof file that Google has developed of them. We see targeted ads based upon our browsing preferences, and even our personal feeds on Facebook and Instagram are arranged in the order of what data suggests we would most like to see, rather than in the order of how they were published. So it is entirely possible for us to live in a filter bubble, that offers us only what algorithms suggest we need to know. All of this means that the teacher librarian role has changed dramatically. The teacher librarian now leads the development of digital literacies. These digital literacies are what will enable students and teachers to navigate the vast amounts of information and to critically evaluate what they encounter. This process is very complex and requires a wide range of capacities and this is why we don't call it digital literacy. There are many digital literacies that we need to consider when we are modeling and scaffolding this for the school community. Let's start by establishing what we mean by ICT, digital technologies and digital literacies. As a teacher librarian, you are going to be working strongly with the ICT capability in the Australian curriculum. However, you might also be working with the digital technologies curriculum. This infographic demonstrates the difference between the two. If you go to the Digital Technologies Hub, there's a lot more information. It's easy to get confused between ICT and Digital Technologies. The term Digital Technology is capital D, capital T. 
This relates to the Australian curriculum, but the term digital technology with lower case is just an all-encompassing term that means anything to do with computers and technology. While you may be teaching aspects of the digital technologies curriculum, especially if you have a makerspace in your library and are working with students to develop coding and programming, robotics, web design, etc. As a teacher librarian, you will definitely be working with the ICT capability, which involves using technology to investigate, create and cr communicate. It involves inquiry learning, information literacy, digital citizenship and more, and it's fundamental to teacher librarianship. Digital literacies look beyond functional IT skills to describe a richer set of digital behaviours, practices and identities. There are quite a few models for defining digital literacies. This is because it can be a difficult concept to pin down. Just like with inquiry learning and information literacy, we can draw from all of these models depending upon our school context, school community and our needs at the time. One way to understand digital literacies is as a composite of many more familiar literacies combined in different ways. Our actions online are shaped by our ability to access these different literacies at the point of need. This is another model from the New Media Consortium. It no longer exists, but it was the group that produced the Horizon reports. This model suggests that there are layers of literacy building from universal literacy, which is very similar to the ICT capability, then creative literacy, which absorbs universal literacy and includes the ability to create as well as consume digital information. And finally, to literacy across disciplines, being able to apply digital literacies as they are associated with different disciplines. So this model shows us how digital literacies can be generic but also contextualised and situated across different subject areas and therefore interpreted in different ways. JISC is a UK group that focuses on higher education and this model of digital literacy builds from ICT proficiency, otherwise known as universal literacy in the NMC model. It then has different ways to apply these skills, which are all encompassed in the circle of digital identity and wellbeing you can see that these models share some similarities and common themes, but have different ways of expressing them. This model comes from Canada, and it's interesting because along with ICT innovation and critical and creative thinking, it references how digital literacies can lead to constructive social action. For those of you who complete LCN 600, Connected Learning, you'll see how some models are suggesting that there should be a transformative element to using digital technologies. That being able to connect in this way should lead to humans being empowered and more aware of each other. Here is the model of digital literacies that Doug Belshaw developed as part of his doctoral thesis. This one focuses on eight elements of digital literacies and he suggests that when you are digitally literate, you can apply these elements in different contexts and in different combinations, almost like different individual ingredients. You combine these into different recipes to create different outcomes as needed. So you can see that there are many different ways to understand digital literacies and the way you modelled and scaffold these in your TL role will be different for each of you, depending upon how your own personal skills and interests develop, the needs of your school community, the system you work in, and how much flexibility you have with access to different technologies. Managing the transition from a time of information scarcity, where students were safely educated within the four walls of the classroom, to now, where access is mobile and it can appear almost unlimited, has challenged schools and education systems. The ways that individual schools and systems have responded to this challenge vary dramatically. Published in 2008, Sharples et al. summarised four approaches to managing access to the internet, which still 10 years later are clearly evident. We have schools and school systems that fit into all four of these categories in Australia. First is a walled garden where schools provide protected and moderated Web 2.0 activities for learning. Second is empower and manage, 
where schools allow children access to the public Web 2.0 sites in a responsible and actively monitored way. Third is lockdown, where schools prevent children's access in school to Web 2.0 sites, but do still provide education on safe use of the internet. And finally is open access, where there is open access to public Web 2.0 sites and the emphasis is on trusting children to exercise self-control and social awareness. The area of digital literacies keeps evolving and changing. This course qualifies you to be the person in the school who provides leadership in this area. There are so many ways the TL role can be enacted with regard to the development of digital literacies. You could be providing access to digital information, teaching staff and students how to use digital tools, you could be a curriculum and pedagogical consultant, the school's network manager, an e-learning or digital pedagogies coordinator or coach. You could be the cyber safety expert, the digital copyright and intellectual property expert, the expert on digital footprints and reputation management, the social media policy maker and manager. You might be the flipped classroom expert, the makerspaces expert, any or all of these. If we look at how the library has transitioned from Library 1.0, where it was all about finding and accessing, to Library 2.0, which also includes creating and making, you'll find the TL role has many new aspects. Collection development now includes digital content curation. The TL is now often the social media manager, at least for the library, if not the whole school. The TL may be called upon to manage apps and for the curation and collation of an app's collection. They may be called upon to oversee or introduce a bring your own device or bring your own technology policy and practice. The teacher librarian may be considered the cloud computing expert managing the learning management system or other cloud based tools such as Google Apps. They may be considered the mobile learning expert looking after all of the mobile devices such as tablets. You may be the 3D printing services provider, as often the 3D printer is housed within the library or in the library makerspace. You may be the port of call for teaching staff and students who wish to use Web 2.0 tools and apps. You may also be asked to find, access, manage, organise, curate and create information about these tools and platforms. You'll probably find yourself also teaching staff and students how to use social media. These are just a sol small selection of the many new aspects of the teacher librarian role as they relate to digital literacy. You can see that the role of the TL in developing and modelling digital literacies is a rich and evolving area that's really important and will continue to grow in importance as technologies become more embedded within our everyday school and working lives. More resources can be found on the Padlet site for this subject.